All right. Um, so CJ Daigle again, Dean of Robotics and Manufacturing here at Dunwoody College. A uh, little lesson today on a little bit more on SCARE Robotics, um, uh, specifically Epson's P3 robot and the Micro Basics, or no, excuse me, the Micro Basic, uh, the Spell Plus programming language. Um, so we'll get into this a little bit. I'm going to specifically tie this towards Arc and Move uh, instructions, uh, but we'll talk about the other instructions as well. A little bit on the robot safety rules. I always like to start with robot safety rules. Remember, uh, for running a robot in the real world, you gotta keep the operating area clear of personnel. Only one person should use the robot at a time. Remember the pinch points that exist on a robot. Maintain a safe, dip, safe distance from these locations. Uh, always keep the emergency stop within reach of the operator. Uh, De-energize and lock out the robot prior to any maintenance. And then when that orange light is on, remember that that, that uh, robot can and will move without warning, so stay clear. All right, so the motion instructions that we're going to talk about. Um, I think we mentioned these in a, in a previous video. I'll go in a little bit more in depth today because I want to go kind of what's going on with this. Um, all right, so first off, uh, we have what's called the go instruction. Go mo moves the robot uh, to a point using point-to-point -point motion. Seems kind of silly, right? The important thing to remember about the go, the go is the fastest way to get from point to point. It has no consideration whatsoever to um, keeping the tool in a linear motion or an arc motion or where the tool goes at all, for that matter. It's just going to move from this XY coordinate to this XY coordinate or this XYZ coordinate to this XYZ coordinate in the fastest way it knows how to get there. Uh, you know, in the real world, we might say, well, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. doesn't mean it's the quickest way to get between two points is a straight line. So I might be able to drive down a county road at 40 miles an hour and get there in an hour, or I might be able to take the interstate in a, in a you know, that goes kind of round and about and around the, the city or something like that and get there in, you know, 20 minutes or something like that. So, so the robot does the same thing. It's going to determine how can it move its axes, get there the fastest, and it doesn't have any concern over what the tool center point's doing or where the tool's going doesn't care about straight line. A lot of times it'll be kind of an arc motion. So if I'm going between two points with a with a go command, so if this is point zero and point one, a lot of times you'll end up with this kind of arcing motion that'll do something like this. It'll get there in a relatively straight line, but it won't be a straight line. The move instruction, by contrast, maybe I'll do this in a different color here. Uh, the move instruction, let's get a pen color here. We'll do blue. So here's the move instruction. The move instruction is important because it executes linear interpolation from point to point. I'm sure I cannot draw a straight line to save my life here, but what linear interpolation means is a straight line. So now we're less concerned about the speed. Um, in, in the CNC world, we might call you know a G0 rapid. Uh, just get there, get there as fast as you can, and a G1 being linear interpolation. It's the same thing here. I would equate to the, the go instruction to like a G0 and the move instruction to like a G1. Um, so G1 or, or move instruction gives me a straight line interpolation. So this is this is nice because now if I need to straight, you know, along the edge of a box or along the edge of a case or um, something like that, um, it's very important to be able to control that motion. All right, the jump instruction, I don't know if I want to pull up another color. I guess I can. Maybe I've got a green or a purple or a pink or something. Let's see. Uh, pointer options in color. And we'll go with uh, this green, I think, that should be still visible at least. Uh, there he is. So the green is the jump instruction. Jump is kind of unique to Scara robots in that we know that this, this J4 goes up and down, right? So it can go down. What the jump instruction allows me to do is where if I was using a go or a move, um, that J4 would just stay in whatever position I was programmed from point to point. So if it was, if it was down here, at this at this at this Z level, um, and I just left it at that Z level. It would just drag it across in a straight line, and it would go from point zero to point one. Um, if it was a move instruction, and if it was a go, it would stay in the same Z, and it would just go around in whatever path it takes to get from point to point with the go instruction. What the jump instruction does is imagine the robot is going to hit point zero right here, right, and then without you having to define the Z. You know, if the Z is defined down here, right, all the way down here, and then you call a jump instruction to a point one over here, 
What a jump instruction will do is it'll pull that Z back up before it moves the robot over to here and then pull that Z back down. So the jump instruction takes that Z up, then we can go over with the Z in the up position, then down again. So it's it's obvious why a jump instruction is so handy for, for a scare robot is a lot of these robots are used for pick and place. So instead of having to, if I'm trying to, I'm going to look at kind of a side view here. You know, if I have to pick parts out of this bin and this is my, these bins are sitting on a table here and the robot's sitting up here or whatever. Um, if I have to go define going down to pick and then define going up to where I'm clear and then over here and this is a point and this is a point and this is a point and then there's a point over here for putting it back down again, right? I've had to define four points. Instead, if I use the jump instruction, I just have to find point zero and point one and then it'll automatically, as it moves from point to point, it will take the Z in the upward direction and then back down in the downward direction. So I only have to define that Z position for the point, and then the clearance will be the up position of the Z axis. So really, really handy instruction, uh, the jump instruction that comes to pick in place. The pass instruction, let me get rid of all of my, uh, let me get rid of all of my annotations here for a minute so I don't have to write over the top of this thing again. Um, all right, the pass instruction is a little bit different too, in that let's say that I'm going um, from a point to a point and I'm heading towards this point, point one. What the pass instruction says is, okay, I don't need to necessarily reach that point. I'm just gonna go kind of towards that point and around. So if maybe you're starting at P0 here and you're gonna go to P2 over here, you could do a pass on P1 which might allow you to avoid an obstruction or something like this and get around there without actually having to physically go to that point, but that point kind of pulled you in that direction um, so that you can make that move. You might say, well, maybe a go would just do that for me automatically. Well, remember the go is gonna use the fastest motion possible, but if we don't know what that path is, the pass really allows us to kind of define that path a little bit, right? We can say, hey, I want you to, yeah, I don't care if you visit that point, but I want you to head towards that point on your way to that next point, whatever that might be. All right, and then finally, the last point here, I'm gonna discard my annotations one more time. The last one here is the arc instruction. And I'm gonna talk more about that in a minute, but the arc instruction is exactly what we need to do circles. So if I have P0 and I have P1 and I have P2 right here, then I wanna define an arc between those, boom, 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 and this is a circle or an arc. So you really don't get a circle interpolation, you get what's called an arc interpolation. And it's good for making about 180 degrees out of a circle, but you cannot define an entire 360 degrees of movement. Uh, zero to 180 can be an arc, and if you need to do a full 360, you're gonna to have to do another arc on the other side. The good news is, you don't necessarily have to define a lot more points. If I want to do a circle, all I really need to do is to find one more point down here I call P3, because P2 will be my starting point for this arc, and P0 will be my ending point for that arc. So, so there's arc one, and then arc two, and now I have a circle. And so you can kind of see, and that'll actually come up in this week's lab, so be ready for that. All right, a little bit on the cylinder demo. Um, in, if you go way back in the past to robotics, um, we didn't necessarily have an arc tool. So the way we made a, a circular movement was by by creating straight line movements kind of in the, in, the, in the shape of a circle. So we get some sort of polygon that kind of takes the shape of the, of the movements. And if, if I do enough of these at n equals six, at six, I don't get a, you know, I don't get a nice polygon. It's close, right? It's close to almost a circle, but as you can see, if n was 100, um, now it would get closer and closer to a circle. So instead of having all these, you'd have these little tiny, these little tiny straights all the way around, right? And it gets closer and closer to a circle. Um, in the past, that's the best we could do was create a bunch of straight line segments, connect them together to form uh, something close to a circle. I, I equate it to kind of like trying to draw a circle on an etch -a sketch when all you can do is control X and Y and go point to point, it's it's almost impossible to draw a circle on an etch -a sketch It's very, very difficult. Um, but we do have this nice arc command that we're gonna learn about today. So the two that I want you to pay attention to are the move and, and arc. Remember, so these really take good control. This is our linear. And in the world of CNC, we might call that a G01. 
and then this is going to be our circular. And in the world of C and C, we have two commands, right? We have G02 and a G03 for clockwise or counterclockwise. In the world of robotics, we just define them by what order the points come at you, uh, whether it's going to be clockwise or clock counterclockwise. But in order for us to create this nice straight, this really nice beautiful arc, I need to find a first point, a second point, and a third point. And then the robot will interpolate that smooth arc between those points. So this is what the arc instructions will look like. So the arc moves the arm to the specified point using circular interpolation in the XY plane. So typically, it's kind of funky, and this is the same in FANUC robots and Epson robots, um, whether it's 6-axis or SCARA, it's very, very similar. Um, I, this is not actually part of my arc. This is my starting point. So it is going to be part of my arc, but I, it's not part of the arc instruction, meaning I'm going to just use a go command to get to P100, right? So P100 is right here. That's my go command. It gets me there. Then I'm going to use two points. Arc command is going to be called. And then P101 and P102 are the two points that I'm going to call out next, P101 and P102. And by doing this, we're going to create a nice smooth arc. Now, this is an important tip down here, and I didn't read this the first time I tried making an arc. When first trying to use the arc instruction, it suggested to try a simple arc with points directly in front of the robot in about the middle of the work envelope. Try to visualize uh, the arc that would be generated and make sure that you are not teaching points in such a way that the robot would try to move outside the work envelope. And, and that's that's actually very easy to do. You know, a lot of times people will they'll say, oh, I want to create, you know, if this is my work envelope and they want to create an arc, they'll create an arc, you know, using uh, you know, something like, you know, this, this, and and this. And what they what they fail to discover is that this thing might actually be leaving the work envelope up here and they end up in a little bit of trouble. And whether that's at a corner or wherever it is. You just want to make sure you're not going to get out of that work envelope. So always try to keep that arc close to the robot and make sure it's in its normal work envelope. Um, before I get into the uh, before I get into the uh, uh, demonstration here, well maybe I'll do the, well, I'll show you the, I'll show you the video here real quick. I just want to get you excited about some of the scare robots. Then we'll, then we'll do a quick demo. This one's kind of a cool one here. Let's go ahead. Um, so if you've ever wanted, if you're wondering as you're watching some of this stuff, you know, is this really that interesting? Is that really that important? So here's an Epson Scare robot. Um, you could program this. You could simulate this exact same robot. I don't know what model number this one is off the top of my head, but very similar to your T3. And you see what it's doing is it's actually packaging cookies. So you've got these single serving cookies and you've got these trays. You've got a sensor there that's triggering the robot, um, telling it to pick it up. And it's using a little vacuum system with a cup. To pick those up and place them into the trays there. and the trays are coming down and um, and runs all day doesn't need anything so off the line these are going into a packaging machine where they're getting sealed up these uh, there's probably a tray former building the trays and now they're going to go down here and probably fold up those trays and come off the assembly line and uh, and you've got a whole box full of cookies here that might be going to a hotel or onto a shelf somewhere well, I guess this what this part's not very automated on this end so uh, but it gives you a good idea of, of how some of these scare robots can be used in real life. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into the Epson software. So this will do a, we'll do a little demo for you. Uh, wrong one there. All right. I'm going to get rid of my stuff here first. I'm going to get rid of that. Delete. Remove. And so what you'll want to do for today's lab, too, is you'll need to uh, create something similar to what I'm doing. I'll give you the 2D layout that I want you to use, um, not what I'm doing in the demo. So the demo will be a little bit different. Um, but for this purpose, I'm just going to insert the cylinder. And I'm going to drag that cylinder over here somewhere so I can get it close. Maybe I'll make it just a hair bigger. I don't want to make it a lot bigger. You know, this is where that work envelope comes into play, right? If I put this thing too far away, it's possible that the robot might be able to get here, here, and here, but it can't get around. You know, so I just want to be careful about where I put that. So it talks about the middle of the work envelope. I kind of like to go somewhere like there, so I'm pretty close and in a good spot. Um, I also like to be off-center. The reason why I like to be off-center is I don't like to shift from lefty to righty, so I don't want the, the, uh, the joints to have to flip around as they're going. So let's see where that looks. That looks pretty good. Now I've got some points in here. I'm going to delete these points. These are points left over from a different project. So I'll just highlight those and delete them. Um, I've still got some main code in here. Let's take a look at that. And I probably actually was running an arc in here. 
So maybe I'll leave that chunk of code in here. I don't have the points, but this will be the chunk of code that I'm going to do, function main, init robot. I'll just do a little do while loop. And so I will do go to point zero, um, and I'll arc on point one and point two, and I'll loop. Um, so that's going to be the simplest way to create my arc. And so now let's go look at our simulation. Now we actually got to find those points on the cylinder. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my uh, jog tool here. I'm going to move it around. And when you're doing the lab today, make sure you're getting that Z down as close to the surface as you possibly can. Um, you can zoom in, of course, and kind of look at it up close and personal and see. You know, and then as you move it around, you should be able to tell that you're not going to uh, make contact with it by moving the, the robot around. You can kind of tell that you don't get a crash here, right? As I drag it across, I can see it's not crashing. If I go down too far, I get a crash, right? So I go up a little bit until I'm happy. I can reset the crash with this green button. I have to go up a little bit more. Oh, I got to reset the crash again. Sorry about that. Oops. Uh, there we go. Ah, it can be a little touchy too, I promise you that. All right, now I'm pretty close and I might say, can I get a little bit closer? This is where I always get myself in trouble. Yeah, that's just what I was telling you not to do when I did it. Let's zoom in a little more. Is that off of it? No, not quite. Oh yeah, that's the typical uh, game I'm playing with my robot here. There we go, that's a nice spot where I want to be. All right. All right, I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty close to the surface now. Now I gotta get onto one of those edges, right? I wanna get to the point where I'm gonna be tracing one of those edges. Oh, I kinda like this right here. Looks like I'm right near an edge there, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that point zero. I will tell you it's probably easiest as you're as you're writing code to not name your points because I don't have to do anything then. I can just go in here and it's P0 is undefined. I just teach it. I don't have to name it. I don't have to select it. I don't have to do anything. So P0 is programmed in. Move around a little bit. I might move this over a little bit. You can see where that point is lying now. It looks pretty good. I'm going to kind of come up near, I don't know if this is like, Seven o'clock is where I'm sitting right now. Get pretty close there. That's looking pretty good too, isn't it? So I'm gonna call that a point. Teach that as a point. Yep. Teach P1. That looks good. I'm gonna probably move my uh, arm a little bit this way now. See how close we can get. Boy, this one worked out pretty good, didn't it? And we'll call this a point. Now, I will, I will warn you, um, sometimes this will screw up, right? Sometimes this won't end up where you want it to end up. Um, but it looks like it's doing pretty good right now. So if I want to move this around, I can kind of see that all those were hitting the edge pretty close. Best thing to do at this point is go into your main program. And I know I've got my points to find, right? There's uh, P0, P1, P and P2. And I don't necessarily care about, I mean, the Z I want down low. And this is another thing about the Z where you saw me trying to jog the Z up and down, you could just determine what that Z height is that you like the best um, and just remember it, you know what I mean? So if it's 53 or negative 53, then make it negative 53, you know, whatever that number is. Don't try to jog it like I am. I mean, that's a little bit painful, right? And then in our main program, we're gonna go to the first point, go to P0. So that's just a go command. The arc command is you start typing that in, start typing all these in actually, so the first one is go P0, right? Oh, there we go. Go P0. And then we're going to arc. And as soon as I start typing in arc in its space, you'll see that it gives me arc uh, midpoint is point, in point is point. So I need arc midpoint is what I need first. It's going to be P1, because we already defined the starting point P0 that we went I used a go command. And then we use a comma to the end point, which is P2. Okay, and there's other expressions and things that you can do in here. For right now, we're just going to go to that point. Arc P1 and P2. And now we'll go back to our simulation. Um, I'm going to go to run, run window. And my run window is there. I'm going to hit start. This is usually where I sometimes will get an error right off the bat. 
to me that's a good sign that it's not airing out right now. Go back to my uh, my menu here, and now what you can see is what it's doing is it's tracing that out in a very, very nice circle there. Um, imagine if you were trying to do this with straight segments, how many straight segments you'd need to try to get something that resembles a nice circle. It's moving all of the joints simultaneously, with the exception of the Z, um, uh, with the exception of J4, to get it to where it actually needs, well, J3 and J4 aren't moving, I guess. Um, J1 and J2 are moving in unison to maintain that arc angle. Now, if I'd done it at 180 degrees, I could go a little bit further, but let me show you, I can go a little bit further regardless, right? Um, all I need to do is define another point. I can just move this thing around a little more. All right, I can get a little bit further down the line here. Let's go up a little bit. I think I'm close here. Might need to go a little bit towards me. Well, that's really close. Where are we at? Let's pull this back just a hair and get that spot there. We'll call that a spot. We'll hit that as a point. And teach that. P3. Yep. And then I'm going to do one more. I, I may not close the loop today, and that's fine. But I, you guys will for the lab, so I'm okay with that. Um, move this back a little further. And can I, how far over can I go? I can go pretty far over, can I? I can see where that is. That looks pretty good. I'm going to try to find that as a point. Teach, yes. And then let's go into our program. So now what we can do is we can see that we did go um, P0 and then arc P1, P2. And I could say, I guess I could say go P2 as my starting point here. And I could do arc P2 or excuse me, P, what do we have there? P3, P4. And I potentially could close this thing off by saying something like go, I don't know if this will work or not, we'll try it. We'll say go P4 and they'll go arc P0, P1. I don't wanna do that because then I'm gonna end up at the midpoint of the next one. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave that alone for a second. And we'll try that first. Let's see how that goes. And had I had I done taken a little more time, I think I might have made those 180 degrees. Well, I'm going to ask good lab. You guys can do it for me. I don't need to do it for you here. Make sure we don't air out here. Oh, look how nice that is. So I didn't quite go 360 degrees, and you can see the line in between those two. The line in between the uh, the two of them right there. So I arc and arc, and then this line is is a go. So that's going to be a very fast movement between those two locations. Well, you can actually see this thing makes a nice clean circle all around that thing, except for that little bottom piece that I that I wanted to move. Um, all right, I do want to show one other quick thing here too. Let me get rid of this for a second. Let's get rid of our uh, our two D uh, cylinder there. Now I'm going to add a box just for a second here, and I want to talk about that move instruction before we get off the off the line here. So I'm going to put in a box. And I'm just going to lengthen it out a little bit so I've got some room to work with. And we'll go back into our 3D view. I'm going to delete these points. Don't need those points anymore. And then what I will do is go back to my simulation. And I'll jog the robot. And I'm just going to teach two points here. I'm going to start off teaching, uh, let's teach this point on the end here. So if we call that the corner, maybe. Looks pretty close. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, we'll call that a point. We'll call that P0. Looks good. And then I'm going to go out as far as I can. I don't care if I, I might not be able to reach as far as I want to, and that's okay. I'll just reach as far as I can. I don't know if that's the same X. It will be when I'm done. I'm going to call that P1. And then uh, let me go in and just make sure those X's are uh, the X. No, it's the, yeah, it's the X. I'll make these both negative 280. And I'll make this one, oops, what did I do there? There we go. I'll make this one negative 280. I won't mess around with anything else. I'm trying to maintain a straight line there. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say go P0, then go P1. I think you guys are probably understanding where I'm going with this. Aha, where I'm going with this. Go P0, go P1. And then I'm going to go back into my simulation. I can see where those two were. I'll go to run, run window, and I'll go to start. I just want to make note of the movement between those two. So P0 was the first one, and P1 was the second one. If you look there, it's going as fast as it can. So what is it doing? It's not maintaining a straight line trajectory. You can kind of see that it's coming off of the, the edge. If I wanted to ride that edge, I cannot use a go command. Go command is a rapid. It's going to get me there as fast as it can. It's not going to be concerned about maintaining that tool in a straight line or in an arc or anything like that. So what I want to do, if I want to maintain a straight line, is I'll go to main, and instead of uh, go P, I'll go go P0, and I'll do move P1 and see if that does what I want it to do. Uh, so I'll do a move P1. We'll go back to our simulation. We'll go to the run window. I'm hoping that this will do what we want. We'll find out real quick. Please don't fail out. That's a good sign. All right. Now what you'll see, we're moving a lot slower. It's not a rapid movement anymore, but notice the tool. The tool is, behead, is heading in a straight line rotation. So we're moving multiple axes to maintain that tool in a linear interpolation. And you can see this is actually probably the best version of this because I left the go P0 in there. So when I go from P0 to P1, I go straight. But when I go from P1 to P0 backwards, I'm curving. So there, that gives you a prime opportunity to see go versus move instruct. So a very, very good thing to, to kind of see there. And then what we, you know, the typical deal, the last thing we really got to show since we didn't show this yet is we ought to just do the jump, right? So let's do jump P0 and jump P1. And if I run those two guys now, let's go to run window, run window, start. Yes. All right. And we'll go back into here. And now what you see is you see it jumps up in the z-axis. Um, so I've defined the lower z, but I don't have to define the upper z, and I don't have to define that clearance. It's just going to do it for me. No need to worry about anything else. So hopefully that's, that's helpful for everybody. They've got an idea of what we'll be doing in the uh, labs. Actually, I should pull up the lab real quick. Uh, this is... Oh, it's somebody else's lab here. Hold on here. Now pull up the stuff I don't want to pull up here. Uh, 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 Scara 02, there it is. That's what I want. Uh, there we go. Um, so in Scara 02 here, what you'll see is I'm going to ask you to describe each of those motion instructions. And an application where that might be the ideal choice. So the jump instruction allows the Z to go back up and down. So Z back up to zero and back down to wherever I want it. Uh, but, you know, a pick-and-place uh, application would be the ideal instruction for that. And I won't talk about the other ones. I'll let you guys figure that out. I do want you to compare the following CNC codes with the equivalent SCARA codes. So uh, G00, what is that equivalent to? Um, and explain, explain, give me a little explanation as to why. So when I say compare, you know, all oh, the G00 is like a Go instruction because I'm not concerned about maintaining the tool in any particular linear or circular interpolation, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, down here, uh, lab activity, use the 2D layout tools to build the model shown in below. So I've got a box and a cylinder now. Um, program the robot points necessary to trace the edges of the box in linear motion. So think about what that means. You don't want to use a go instruction anymore. So think about that. Step three. Program the robot points necessary to trace the edges of the cylinder uh, in preparation for arc motion. Uh, combine your points with a program to perform the following. Robot starts in the home position as shown. Robot will trace the outside of the box in a linear fashion. I don't care which point you start with, but make sure you close the loop. So if you start here, you go all the way around and you end up there where you started. Robot returns to the home position, waits five seconds, then it goes back and does the outside of the box again. Then it returns to the home position, waits five seconds, and then it goes and traces the circular path all the way around the cylinder. Then it returns to home, waits five seconds, and then it repeats the whole process all over again. Just like last time, I want you guys to comment your code. Make sure the code meets the assembly procedure above. Um, save the following files and email them to me. So a Word file with this Word file with your questions completed. 
the notepad file with your program code, and then the Excel spreadsheet with all of your point data so that I can test it. Be careful as you're placing the cylinder in the box and see where I place them in relationship to the robot at the intersection here and here and at the intersection here and here. And I did test this and it runs like a champ. So you should be able to place a similar size box and cylinder. I won't necessarily, I believe when I brought these in, I brought these in as the, as the default size. So I didn't resize the box and cylinder at all. Um, so you shouldn't have to either, but I, that's not gonna be part of the grading. Per se. I just wanna see that you can trace a round circle around a cylinder and a square around a box and follow these instructions. And also when, the, when you're in the home position, the tool should be in the up position. So your Z should be all the way up. So that's one thing a couple of you guys missed on the, the, last, um, the last lab. So with that, that's all I've got. And, uh, have fun with this. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thanks.